What's going on guys? Good morning. Welcome back to United View. Hope everyone is doing very well. Having a great Saturday morning. We've got some Manchester United news. We're going to bring it to you. Possible summer exits on the horizon. Harry Maguire, the Manchester United captain. His days could be numbered under current manager Eric Ten Hag. Fred, there's been so much discussion about Fred. His contract situation. Is he going to get a contract extension? Is he going to be leaving? Well, according to reports, Fred could be released this coming summer, along with Harry Maguire's the departure as well. I've got the plenty, plenty of stuff to discuss to get into. So much transfer news, discussion, rumours, speculation, opinion, and we're going to be doing it all this morning. So be sure to smash a like on the like button, guys. Be sure to subscribe as well. Bottom right-hand corner, remember, you can join the UV Members Club. Links in the video description. You get your badges, your emojis, and your exclusive members-only content, such as UV Raw, a behind-the-scenes look at the day-to-day -day goings on at United View. At least at Manchester United. United View. It's early on a Saturday. So how is everyone? I hope you're all doing very well. Let me know in the comment section where you're watching from, how you're doing on this fine Saturday morning. But let's get into it. Let's get into this latest Manchester United news because it's some big developments in Manchester United. And as the rebuild continues under Eric Ten Hag, as Eric Ten Hag looks to pick Manchester United up and restore them to where they used to be, uh, over a decade ago at this point, the last time we won the Premier League, five years since we won a trophy, Eric Ten Hag is doing a pretty good job so far of cementing his footprint on the club and cementing how he wants Manchester United to play. But a rebuild, of course, is always going to take time. It's going to take several transfer windows, not just one, the one that Eric Ten Hag has had so far. So departures could be already planned and incomings could already be planned for next summer. Starting off with the Manchester United captain, the lightning rod that is Harry Maguire. It was reported uh, yesterday by Jamie Jackson, uh, I believe it's from The Guardian, saying uh, that Manchester United will consider offers for Harry Maguire next summer with Eric Ten Hag intent on selling his captain to help fund a continuing overhaul of the squad. Manchester United realised they may have to accept a considerable loss to sell Harry Maguire. Eric Ten Hag admires Harry Maguire's professionalism but views his sluggish pace as a problem and wants to sell him and add true competition for Rafael Varane and Lissandro Martinez and enhance the quality quality of the defense. Now, obviously, a lot of people will be seeing this news this morning or when they saw it yesterday and would say, ah, they'd be, they'd be breaking into song. Hallelujah. That's what they'll be doing, right? And uh, look, obviously, obviously, you know, we don't have to, um, you don't have to be a genius to figure out that Harry Maguire at Manchester United is not working. He's been at the club for uh, this will be, be four years. He arrived in 2018, I believe. Or was it 2019? Either way, um, and became the captain immediately at the club under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And we, I've said this a million times. I'm, I know I'm preaching to the choir here. But I, I think a real good example of Harry Maguire's tenure at Manchester United was actually this past week in the Carabao Cup when he played against Aston Villa on Thursday. And I spoke about this on uh, Match Day Reloaded here on the channel uh, yesterday. Be sure to check it out. It's a great show. Um, that I think the problem is with Maguire at this point, they're obviously... Uh, ish, I think you can... It's, it, let's start off with the... <laughs> it's a loaded topic. With the captaincy with Harry Maguire... Clearly, he's not the captain figure at Manchester United. Clearly, he's not a leader. Whatever you look for from your captain, and lots of people have different sort of criteria that they look for when it comes to their captain at a football club. Some people look at it as uh, leadership just off the pitch. It doesn't have to be, you know, performances or anything like that. Sometimes it's a club captain. They don't even have to play, but they're just, they're the leader. They're the experienced figure. They're the leader in the locker room, as it were. Some people want them to be you know, loud and on the pitch, constantly communicating. Some people don't necessarily feel that's necessary. Some people just want to see them lead in terms of performances. Some people just, you know, want to see them in other aspects. Whatever whatever your criteria may be, Harry Maguire does not fit that criteria. I think especially now, and again, we'll get to the tactical side of why it's not working out with Harry Maguire or hasn't worked out with Harry Maguire at Manchester United and why I think Eric Ten Hag's looking to, to ship him out in the summer if those reports are believed to be accurate. But in terms of, you know, a captain-like figure, a leader-like figure, we now have leaders at the club. And the contrast and the difference of when you see a real leader in comparison to someone that's just been given the armband is drastic, really. I think you look at people like Bruno Fernandes. And I know people in Bruno somewhat of a lightning rod, but you look at someone like Bruno Fernandes, 
that is a leader-like figure. When we didn't have him against Aston Villa at Villa Park, we missed him. We missed his technical aspects on the pitch. We missed his energy. We missed his forward passes. We missed, you know, having that person that could find a pass, could do something out of nothing. We missed that. But in addition, we did meet his, miss his leadership. We did miss his, his energy, his infectiousness. And we could have done with him to have a word with players around him to say, buck your ideas up, do something. We missed that. We missed his leadership against Aston Villa. And there are other leaders in the squad now too. There are people like Casemiro. There are people like Christian Eriksen. There are people like Lissandro Martinez. There are people like Rafael Varane. And when you see those people and you go, that's a leader. That's a leader in terms of their tenacity, their aggression, their professionalism, the way they conduct themselves. And you do compare it to Harry Maguire, you go, ah, that's, that, they're captain-like figures. And Maguire just doesn't live up to those standards of, of being a leader. That's the captain part of it. So clearly, he should not be the Manchester United captain. In terms of his quality, he probably shouldn't be a Manchester United player either. And it's no disrespect to Harry Maguire. And I think this is where it's really important. When you have the Maguire conversation, you always have to keep it respectful. Because the moment you don't, the moment you start getting into insults, the moment you start making it personal or you start going into whatever, you kind of you lose track of really what's the point here. You really lose track of what is the real conversation. The crux of the issue are that Harry Maguire isn't good enough. That's what it is. You don't need to get personal. You don't, you don't need to start trading insults. Harry Maguire is not good enough. His quality is not good enough, particularly now with how Manchester United are playing. If Manchester United played a system that kind of catered to Maguire's skills or abilities, i.e. we were playing a, a, a lower defensive line as opposed to a higher one, if we were playing you know, um, slower football, if we weren't playing so possession-based football, if we were constantly dealing with balls into the box and we were playing quite rigid football, shall we say, then that would be fine. But we're not. We're not. And it was, again, it was evidenced on Thursday in the Carabao Cup against Aston Villa, whereby... Eric Ten Hag wants his players to play out from the back. And Maguire's not terrible on the ball. I had the discussion in the summer with Flex. He's not terrible on the ball, Harry Maguire. He's got a good crossfield pass. That's okay. But still, in those sort of tighter spaces where you are going to be pressed, he looks really uncomfortable. But the real issue is particularly the high line. Manchester United now, and Eric Ten Hag wants to play a high line. Harry Maguire cannot play in a high line. He does not have the pace or the mobility to do it. And there are going to be instances when you play a high line, when you get caught out, it's part of the risk. You're playing risk football when that happens. And especially when you've got fullbacks that are so inverted. So you've got Dallow and you've got either Shaw or Malassia. They're playing essentially as central midfielders. There can be instance, uh, instances where either the fullbacks or the midfielders, they lose the ball. And when they lose the ball, then they'll try everything they can to get back. But you are going to be quite exposed. And what you have to be good at is one-on-one -on -one defending and have great recovery pace. Because most of the time, if you lose the ball in those central areas, a good player worth their salt is just going to go either one or two passes in behind. You've got to deal with it. You need to have recovery pace and you need to be able to be composed enough to get back and then they're going to take you on. Maguire can do neither. The recovery pace isn't there. He needs someone like a Martinez, like a Varane to bail him out or like a Lindelof to bail him out. And you can't go through a season like that. And it's kind of like what the report says, that Maguire's professional, but Eric Ten Hag views the sluggish pace as a problem and needs to sell him to a true competition. And we spoke about this again um, during the game against Aston Villa at Villa Park last weekend because you do look at, well, if Varane's not available or let's say Lindelof's not available, you need another Martinez-like figure, not someone exactly the same as him, but you need a Martinez-like figure with Martinez-like qualities, most importantly pace, so that when you do have injuries or suspensions or illness, because you will have them due to the volumes of get or just tiredness, fatigue, due to the volume of games that we have, you need someone that can that matches the quality somewhat, that can match those basic fundamental qualities of what Ten Hag is looking for from a, from a centre-back, which is pace, ability to play out with your feet, ability to play a high line, and ability to recover and be composed. And Maguire doesn't fall into those categories. Now, as far as we're going to make a loss, of course we're going to make a loss because we overpaid in the first place. And that's not on Harry Maguire. That's not Harry Maguire's fault. It's not, it's not Harry Maguire's fault that Manchester United clearly overspent for a player that in retrospect wasn't worth it. I think going back all of those years, I think people were happy 
that United signed Harry Maguire. You can't, it's very easy to sit here and say, oh, I said this however many years ago. We were happy we signed Maguire. It hasn't worked out. Clearly, he was drastically overvalued. What would we get for Harry Maguire now? I mean, you can let me know in the comment section, maybe 30, 35. I, I don't even think 40, to be honest. I know the market's heavily inflated. Inflation isn't just on in the on the shelves at Tesco. It's also in the football market as well. So I suppose anything is possible. He's English, depending on how England do at the World Cup. But again, this move wouldn't be happening until the summer anyway. Um, I, 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 can't, I just can't see a world where it would be 40 million. I think I'd have pushed 35 or 30. You know, how old is he now? 29? It, I'd, it, at that at that point, if you're Manchester United, you're making a, a 40 million loss anyway. So does it really matter? You're making a massive loss and you are going to make a massive loss. That, and to be honest, you are always going to make a massive loss, really, on, 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 in terms of salon value. The hope would be that you get your 80 million's worth because, you know, he plays for eight years and Manchester United win trophies, which, of course, in retrospect, is laughable. But we're always going to make a loss on that. And clearly, again, it's the right move. And I think that what we're seeing is Eric Ten Hag, when he came in to Manchester United uh, over the summer, and people wanted that quick snap reaction, that snap response to Harry Maguire being the captain and Harry Maguire being sold. And I, and to be honest, we really were never going to get that. We never were going to get that true indictment of this player's rubbish, get rid of him. Because there had been a lot of outgoings at the club. And I think Ten Hag was conscious not to rock the boat too much on what was already a really fragile club and already a really fragile group of players did he really want to rock the boat that much and clearly he didn't and clearly he was like you know what I am giving everyone a clean slate <clears throat> and what I'm going to do when giving everyone this clean uh, clean slate is I'm going to give you a year basically and it's kind of similar to what Pep did when he first came in at Man City when he first came in at Man City 2016 there are a lot of players that weren't all that great, but they stuck around. And then it was really the next year that we really saw him do a massive overhaul. He signed those four fullbacks. The fullbacks with the club, he went, they're all terrible. Get rid of them all. Bring new ones in. And I, and I think it's kind of similar with Harry Maguire and Eric Ten Hag. It's a case of, I'm going to come in. I'm going to see. I'm going to see what you can offer. I'm going to see what you can do. And uh, in this year, I'm going to make my mind up. And he's already made his mind up on a couple of players. Aaron Wan-Bissaka. He clearly doesn't rate. He's not good enough. He's going. Harry Maguire. Clearly, he's gone. I respect him as a as a person and a profe and his professionalism. But for what I want, he's not good enough. So he's going. Fred. We'll touch on Fred in a second. I think David De Gea. The jury's still out. Honestly, I, I, as I've said before, I think Ten Hag himself is still somewhat undecided about what he wants to do. But what you can take from this, especially with this Fred news, we'll touch on in a second. What you can take from this is that. Eric Ten Hag has something that a lot of the Manchester United managers have not had, particularly Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, but you could even argue Jose Mourinho, Ralph does he even count, but he's got something, and even Louis van Gaal to an extent, he's got something that the previous United managers haven't had uh, at all, which is full control. In, in previous years, Manchester United, even if the idea was broached about selling, selling Harry Maguire, it'd be, no, no. He's our, he's our captain. We spent 80 million. We don't want to be embarrassed. Make it work. Make it work. We spent a lot of money on this guy. We put our neck outs on the line. Make it work. Eric Ten Hag's got the authority to come in and go, nope, not working. He's going. It's detrimental to my plans. It doesn't fit what I want to do. The proof's in the pudding here, guys, because we've had good performances this season in comparison to last season. You can see progression. You can. I know some people want it quicker. Sometimes, you know, you don't get everything overnight, but we have some progression. But to progress even more, we have to get rid of this guy and another guy and this guy and that guy and bring these people in to really get what my vision is for this club and my vision is for this team. I think he's got uh, um, his authority already has improved considerably. I, I really do believe it has. Now, as I mentioned, it's not just Harry Maguire that seemingly could be making a Manchester United exit in the summer because Fred could also be set for a Manchester United departure as his contract seemingly uh, is about to expire. Eric Ten Hag, once again, this comes from Jamie Jackson, is preparing to release Fred when the midfielder's contract expires in June. 
Eric Ten Hag has been impressed with Fred's application and team ethic, but is keen to overhaul the Manchester United midfield, which must be said is in a stark contrast to rumours that were out there um, earlier this week. There were rumours out there this week on social media. I think they might have been picked up by a couple of newspapers as well that Fred was set to be handed a three-year contract extension. And the rumour was that not only uh, Fred was going to get this contract extension, but it was going to be on reduced terms. He was going to reduce his wage, but he was going to be sticking around for three more years. And that was met with a, a mixed response, to say the least, I think. Certainly what I saw on social media. I think the, the consensus was that... In, it's, it, not that Fred's part of the problem, but is Fred really... is having Fred this midfielder that's going to be really part of success at Manchester United. And again, he's not really a player that Eric Ten Hag has truly, honestly, um, believed in that much. We've seen appearances like in the Carabao Cup this past week. But apart from that, maybe come on as a substitute. You know, he had... Um, he played, but but then we, he also has had games where he's played well. And that's Fred in a nutshell, really, because against Tottenham, he was like one of, if not the best player on the pitch, maybe Bar Bruno Fernandes that night. And then he played against um, Newcastle the game before, and he was terrible. He was awful. And and that's and that, that I guess that's the crux of Fred's Manchester United's career. You have no idea what you're going to get. And most of the time, most of the time, it's been the scenario whereby you're, you're shaking your head going, and then you'll have this occasional match where you go, where, where is that Fred come from? Man, he can pass the ball, he can shoot, he can do something. So when, when the news came out in the week, my long-winded point here is, when the news came out in the week, I myself wasn't totally against it. I wasn't, I wasn't totally against it because I was thinking, well, you know, I get three years, he's 29, that brings him to 32. Maybe that isn't really the direction we want to be going in, but reduced terms as a squad player, which is what he's been used as so far this season... He's not a starter. He doesn't start many games at all. He might come come on as a substitute when you need some legs or in the occasional cup game he'll start or in a Premier League game where you really need that extra set of legs in midfield or, for instance, I believe like in that um, Spurs game where Ericsson wasn't available, so he started alongside Casemiro and he played really well. That's where you can use him. So it wasn't dead against it and on reduced terms, but I suppose... I suppose that now me looking back on it and my initial feelings on it, I said, first of all, if Eric Ten Hag wants it, if Eric Ten Hag, if that's the decision that Eric Ten Hag wants to do, it's the right decision, in my opinion. Anything this manager wants to do, as I've said before, I think his authority has increased considerably. So whatever Eric Ten Hag wants to do, let him do it. Whatever he believes is best for the club and best for the team, let him do it. Because chances are, it's better than any idea that people above him have. And it's the right idea. If they don't want it, but Ten Hag does, chances are it's the right thing for Manchester United. So that's one thing. But I, I wasn't totally against it because, and now, sorry, I, I've, I kind of take a step back because I think we have to get back into that mentality. We have to be ruthless. We, we really do. And it's not that I was saying, oh, Fred should stay out of sentiment. It's more just so, oh, yeah, maybe he, maybe he can do a job. But we need to get out of that mindset, I think. I think that's 10 years of not winning a Premier League title. I think that's five years of not winning a trophy of having players that, well, they, you know, they could be useful. Useful ain't got to cut it. The, the standards have to be higher. And the standards have to rise back up to what they were previously. And uh, Eric Ten Hag spoke about Donny van der Beek in his press conference after the game in, on Thursday when he said, he was asked about Donny possibly going out on loan. And he said, I don't think a loan is suitable. Either he adapts or he, you know, he thrives in this environment. I'm paraphrasing here, but either he thrives in this environment or he goes, basically, you know, either you're good enough or you're not, essentially. And a lot of people reacted to that positively, not so much because it was related to Donny, but more so of the, just the overall mentality that that involved of, yeah. That's a Manchester United mentality. That's what it used to be. That's what it used to be. Either you're good enough or you're not. And if you're not good enough, you're gone. And and I guess that kind of could, would would relate to Fred, really. You know, yeah, he's an all right player. And yeah, on his day, he can be good. And yeah, he can be an option and he can do a job. But now, now the standards have to get bigger. And doing a job isn't good enough. With Manchester United, we require more than just being able to do a job. And, uh, you know, with the amount that we spent this past summer... 
and possible concerns when it comes to cash flow at Manchester United, especially with a required investment in Carrington and the stadium and the glazonomics involved. If there, if Ericsson Hark said, well, you know, to get that extra couple of players next year, you're going to have to sell to buy. They'll go, okay, I'll, I'll get rid of the players that I don't deem good enough. Harry Maguire, Fred, that's where I'll start. And as I mentioned, I totally back the manager. And these are players that certainly a lot of people have wanted to be rid of for a long time. So we'll have to wait and see whether it happens. Of course, look, at the moment, it is just paper talk. So anything's possible. We could see the complete opposite happen. And there's a lot of time to go between now and the summer. And people can change. Form can turn up. And fortunes can dip as well. So anything's possible. We'll have to wait and see. But let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you expect Harry Maguire to go in the summer. How much do you think he would go for? Fred, do you expect him to be released by Manchester United at the end of his contract? or should he stay you might feel a little bit different maybe you feel like fred can do a job let me know your thoughts in the comment section below be sure to smash a like on the like button be sure to subscribe bottom right hand corner of course it's match day tomorrow sunday we'll have a full match day experience live from uvhq with the match view fan views etc plus we've also got a match preview dropping later today with flex so there's plenty of content to come so be sure to click that subscribe button click the notification bell you'll be notified when we go live and when our latest video is uploaded i'll speak to you again very soon have a great saturday Peace.